Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins, thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to show you how to create this faux metal look, complete with the rusted background as well. And I'm using my brand new textures, Wings and Things, Bee and Dragonfly layering dies. So you get both the insects in one die set. There's three layers to the dragonfly, four layers to the bumblebee, and as you can see, they look absolutely beautiful when they're layered together. And you can pick and choose how many layers you use as well. So I may or may not use the solid layer for the bumblebee. Be. I'm going to recreate this look with the bee so you can then see both effects and I'm going to go through some alternative looks as I create it as well for you because you know black cardstock may not be your thing. If you enjoy videos like this about card making, paper craft, mixed media, please do make sure you're subscribed to my channel and I'd love it if you could give this video a thumbs up. Everything I'm using is linked down below so let's jump straight into the tutorial. So as I say, this is the die set that I'm using and I'm focusing on the bumblebee. I have pre-cut these from a black cardstock. The reason I use black cardstock is because if there's any missed patches in your embossing, you're not going to really see it. I've got a little bit on the corner of this wing just here where the, well, I didn't miss it with embossing powder, but the embossing powder I actually used ended up being translucent. So you can see the gloss there just on the end here, but it didn't show, the colour I wanted didn't show. So the fact that I've got black inside instead, it really doesn't matter. It still looks like a metal finish. And also on the underneath of the wings as well, if you catch them, you're not going to see bright white cardstock. So the first thing we need to do to get this metallic look is ink up all of our die cuts with an embossing ink. So this is a clear embossing ink and I am going to do all of the pieces but I'm going to show you what I do on the solid so you can see it clearer and then I go ahead and repeat that on the more detailed die cuts as well. So you want to apply ink to your entire die cut and I find by pressing the die cut into the ink pad, although I get slightly sticky fingertips this way, um, I don't actually waste as much ink on surrounding cardstock if I'm pressing the ink pad down onto it. So I, find, I think it just saves a little bit of ink. It's very hard to tell, but I feel like it should. So just making sure that your entire image is covered with clear embossing ink there, and you'll soon be able to tell when you start applying the powder. Now going on to a scrap piece of cardstock here, and I'll go white just so you can really see what I'm doing. The first colour I'm going to put down is my contrast colour. Now, I would say there's probably a couple of different colours you could use for this. The first one is what I'm using, and that's a teal. Now, I'm using teal luster from, from WOW. Uh, so this has a slight teal hint of teal to it. You could use a bright teal if you've got one that is opaque and really going to show the colour on the dark cardstock. But you could also go with an orange or a red or a green. So you can go patina or you can go sort of rust-like. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to go with a little more of the patina look. And I'm just going to sprinkle this in a couple of places on the B. So not too many. This isn't going to be the focal point colour. And then I just want to flip that and tap off the excess. So you can see I've got the teal there in a few places. And if you think, oh, blimey, I've actually put that in far too down far too much you can actually even brush some away a little bit too then i'm going to go in with a second color this one is a copper color this is a sizzix embossing powder um, i often find sort of the pinching motion quite nice for easily putting your powder exactly where you want it without wasting too much i mean you always tip it back into the tub anyway so you don't really waste much at all but that's quite specific where you're putting it then Again, tip this off and pop it back into the tub. And you want to do this between, I've just screwed the lid on there, but you want to do this between each colour because otherwise you're just going to contaminate the previous or the next powder. Now I'm starting to get powder on there. I'm going to be using my tweezers to hold it. Next is silver. Now I'm really getting low on this particular silver. I do have a silver sparkle powder, but I don't think sparkly silver is really the look I'm going for here. So... I'm just trying to use this sort of matte silver as, as much as I can for now. I really need to stock up. Again, this is a wow embossing powder. And lastly, I'm now going to go all over the entire shape and then capture every element that's left with gold. So the gold isn't going to stick to anywhere where we've already got powder. That powder shouldn't come off where you've already put it. So don't worry about that. And I'm just going to tap the excess and as you can see we've now got those four different colours all on there. Now I'm just putting a heat resistant mat down onto my desk and I'm going to heat this bumblebee up 
um, because it's quite solid and it's on a cardstock that's around about 190 gsm might even be a bit more than that it probably won't blow around so i'm not worried about holding it still but you would want to use your tweezers or a pokey tool to hold it still otherwise so you don't burn your fingers As you can see, the four colours blend beautifully and we've got this lovely variation of different metals. Now, of course, if you prefer, you could just do one colour of metal. I would definitely suggest go in with a contrasting colour, so your patina or your rust colour as well, your teal or your orange or your red, um, just for a bit of variation. But you can do all gold or all silver or all copper if you want. So I've done that on the solid one to show you. And as an example, you can see here, I didn't get much powder on the tips of the feet there. Uh, and they're black and that's absolutely fine it doesn't look as unfinished as it would if this was white cardstock so I'm going to repeat this process for the other three decorative pieces those are a bit more intricate so you probably won't see quite as well what I'm doing so I'll speed through that and then we'll put this bead together so all my pieces are cut now embossed and they are all completely cooled so it's time to put them together I'm going to start with the top layer and with the bumblebee that is the body and I'm just going to put a little bit of glue around where the wings will be because that's the layer it's going onto and I'm actually going to stagger this ever so slightly just so that you get let's stagger it uh, that way so bring it ever so slightly lower than the wings are um, just so that you get like a little bit of dimension a little bit of almost a drop shadow so a bit of texture in there so that's on the wings and then we're going to put all of this onto this decorative butterfly it's not a butterfly bumblebee so again I'm going to use hot glue for this. I'm not going to put any glue on the wings at all, just on the body and just down the centre there. I don't need it all over. And again, I am going to stagger this ever so slightly just to give a little bit more dimension, just like so. And what you'll find is you'll be able to then lift the wings up and away. Now I'm going to put this onto black cardstock as it is. As you can see, you can use this die cut just like that now with the dragonfly i have put it onto the solid background which i'm going to do with the bee but i just wanted to give you the options so you've got the lots of detail there it's very intricate you can use it just like this you can also go on to say a white cardstock as we were with this or any color cardstock and you will get very different looks from it i mean look how beautiful that is nice and clean really pretty with the metallics against the white so there's a couple of options there for you. Now I'm going to put the rest of this body onto the solid bumblebee there. So again, just a little bit of hot glue is my preference here because I'm heating or, or gluing onto the uh, heat embossing. If I wasn't going onto the embossed surface, I would probably just use a wet glue. I'm going to make sure this time that everything's lined up because you want the legs and the antenna to line up. So now we've got more layers to our wings that we can lift up. We've got the solid underneath. And when you put that on the black, look how luxurious, how beautiful that looks. And you've got the depth within there as well. So it looks like you've got those stripes. And as I said before, the reason I've gone onto black cardstock is because if I lift this up, you see under the wings, you're just going to see black. So it kind of blends in quite well. Now, for a background, as you can see on here, I used one of my splat stamps, which I'm going to show you in a moment, and I created a rust effect. So I'm going to do that too. Now the splat stamps are part of this new collection, and they are these. So these are your watercolour splash, sorry, not splat, splash, half tone stamps. So they are half tone. If you are just stamping these with an ordinary ink, you will get a half tone effect, so you'll get shading in there. Because I'm going to be uh, using clear ink and heat embossing, the embossing particles naturally will spread as they melt, so we won't get that half tone look, but that's fine because we still achieve the shape of the splash here. So I'm going to take the one of the splats or splashes, um, doesn't matter where, you can put this any way you like, whether it's up, down, round, anyway. And I'm going to use my stamp platform just to stamp this in clear ink. Today I'm using Versamark, but there's lots of other clear embossing inks out there that you could be using. Now when I've used clear embossing ink, I like to hold this up to something shiny and make sure that I can see that I've got the ink in all the places I need. Hopefully there you can see that on the black surface. I've probably got a little patch here that didn't quite go, so I'll press that down. But the beauty of these stamps are that they are an organic shape. 
um, you're never going to get two the same so if you do miss a patch it really doesn't matter now you may have noticed that I actually didn't go in with my silver on my top layers of my B and that's because I've got such a tiny amount left and I wanted to save it for this background so that's the reason I just stuck with the other three colors you can see that's all I've got at the moment so I'm going to shade that around there we go I did get every area of that splat and hopefully there you can kind of just see that half tone effect as I say once you start melting you don't see a great deal of that not as much as I'd like um, but you know that's just one of those things I want to heat emboss this I want it to look like it's metal on metal so I am going to do so and not worry about not achieving that half tone effect it's still a fantastic splat or splash um, shape to be using because it's very difficult to create an organic and relaxed splash shape when you're trying a lot of people actually find that they can't do random or, and organic shapes like this so to have them as stamps takes a lot of the work out of them there you can see a little bit of the light dark sort of shading in that embossing it's so cool with the half tone stamps uh, there'll be more videos on my channel uh, there is actually a video explaining how to use half tone stamps and what they are if this is sort of intrigues you and you'll find that video just here okay so my bumblebee is going to sit over this now it can be completely over it it could be half over it um, I might do it like so and what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to take a pokey tool I will always trim my cardstock down later on and I'm just going to mark into the embossing and this is easiest done when you first melted it because you do kind of have it still a little bit uh, softer to be able to embed into it and I'm just using my pokey tool to scratch where the underneath and the top of my B falls okay so you can see I've just it's kind of etched the outline in there and now I'm going to take an alcohol ink. So this is an orange alcohol ink. I've taken the label off because the brand is completely, it, it doesn't matter what brand it is, they all do the same job. So I'm going to just take the lid off of this. And I'm very careful with alcohol inks, things like the lids, wherever you put them, the ink will go. And I'm just going to run some uh, alcohol ink around that edge that we've just etched, just very roughly. And then I'm going to, in a couple of places, allow that to kind of drip down a little, like so. Now I can leave this to air dry if I wish, but I find the best effect is if you heat dry it. Now what you'll notice when you heat dry is that some of the alcohol ink pulls together and it creates this kind of almost, oh, I don't like the word, but crusty, effect where the ink is clumped together and then starts drying and you really get these fantastic almost rust bubbles you can see one happening on the bottom here i'll zoom into that in just a moment but i just think it gives a much uh, more realistic look than just a solid orange everywhere if you left this to air dry that just wouldn't happen what also happens a little bit because you are overheating some of the embossing powder you will find you get a little bit of a cracking motion in it too which is just a really fun effect now i'm going to glue my bee on again i'm just going to stick with the body in case i want to lift the wings up at all using that line as a guide and you can see we've now got these kind of uh, rust effects coming out from underneath the body there onto the embossing which is just so cool you have a few moments just to maneuver that if you want to and I think I'm going to add a little bit more under the body just here sort of under his bottom just here too and again I'm going to heat that I'm going to be careful though because this will also remelt the embossing powder that's on the bee so quite quickly try and heat that get that that um, alcohol ink just sort of clumping together quickly and then I can let the rest dry by itself so we get this much darker effect then perfect look at that so cool now we can lift up our wings and really create lots of dimension with that so you can see how I created this one in the same way here it's such a really fun and cool effect and you get both shapes in with one die set 
So of course I just matted this one onto a white card base, added a quick sentiment. I will do exactly the same with this one too. You'll be able to see that on my social media pages. And don't forget, of course, all the items that I've used are linked down below. Thank you everybody for joining me. Take care and I'll see you again very soon.